The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello and welcome to Harvest on this wonderful Monday. Unsung hero, uh, counselor Kelly Richard, she's a pregnancy counselor. She's going to talk about families who open their heart and home to children in need of adoption on today's show. And Pastor Mark Lance shares powerful yet practical principles in today's Motivational Minute titled Controlling How Others Respond. Plus, Middle East correspondent Brian Bush has the latest on the Syrian army's advance in Aleppo. All that and more coming up on today's Harvest. Drew Sumrall joining us here at the Open. Good to have you back from Israel. It is great to be back. <laughs> here the, the tour went very well. The tour went uh, excellent. I had a great time with people from all across the country. I had a great time with uh, Pastor Mark Lance, who, as you said, is going to be on yep. a little later. Got a lot of uh, great feedback mm -hmm. from the tour mm -hmm. group and... Like I feel like we've said uh, many times over the last several years, tourism is is booming. The the country of Israel is is full. Uh, for folks who want to go next November, I mean mm -hmm. that was one of the things we heard back from our group is we had more people in our church who wanted to go, and we just didn't have. Once the airlines and the hotels have Filled no up. more rooms or yeah. seats, yeah. that's sort of the end. So yeah. we're we're, we're going to plan on. Even more, even though this tour was uh, one of our biggest in the last several years, right. we're planning right. on it being much, much bigger uh, next November. I, th I do think we have some availability left on our February, February tour, mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's coming up pretty quick. So people yeah. need, if you want to go in February, n today you need to give us give, a call. Give a call. But next November, we're looking forward to a, a, a really good time. Well, you've been there a number of times, so there's a reason we keep going back. What were some of the highlights of this trip, something that made it unique for you? Well, uh, I mean... <clears throat> One of the things that made it uh, unique, I mean, February, this last February, was obviously the first time I had ever been mm -hmm. to Israel without my mm -hmm. dad. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the first time I had been on a November tour without him. In fact, it was just one year uh, yeah. since his last trip there. In fact, last November, his last trip there, they were just celebrating 50 years. That was our 50-year mark of wow. taking, taking people to Israel. Uh, to Israel. Wow. So, uh, but, you know... This is this is not from this last trip per se, but uh, the footage is very similar. Obviously, the, yeah. uh, going out on the Sea of Galilee was a highlight. Going yes. to uh, Yardanit, the uh, the baptism site. I believe we had about 77 people who got baptized out of 108. So a lot of people got baptized, mm -hmm. which was a, a really great time. Uh, the weather was very very warm. It was a little hazier than than this footage, but mm -hmm. uh, very nice. Jerusalem is uh, obviously a little more mild than uh, up in the north in Galilee and all the way down the south in a lot, but uh, yeah. some good weather, uh, always uh, good food, uh, some some good fellowship with yeah. uh, some great folks from across the country. We just had a really good time. And I'm sure that there were a number of people that uh, might have been their first time to Israel. Did you happen to hear any feedback from those that were first timers? We did. I mean, uh, people are always impressed with, uh, you know, how organized our tours are, which obviously we can't take all the credit for that. We, we use a great group there in Israel called IGT. We've been working with them, uh, I think, since the day that they uh, they opened with uh, uh, Benny Savan, maybe 25 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they do a fantastic job. We have uh, a tour host that goes around with the group to make sure that all those little details are taken care of. You know, when you get dozens of people all right. together, there's always a little thing somebody might misplaced their passport, these sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of little details besides the big picture. Right. And we make sure that all those things are taken care of. Uh, switching gears here real quickly. Uh, we're still in the midst of a Bible campaign at La Cie Broadcasting, working together with Feed the Hunger. We've got Bibles that have already gone out to uh, Nicaragua, uh, going out to Zimbabwe, uh, going out to Uganda as well. And uh, just a quick word, Nicaragua got hit by pretty heavy hurricane uh, this last week, Hurricane Otto, and those Bibles are being distributed uh, to people in need who have had to flee their homes and had their come back to see their homes ruined, so perfect timing there. But we've still got a ways to go, and we still need people to respond. You know, I can't think of, like I've said before, I can't think of anything more important for uh, Christians than to, number one, to take care of people physically, bodily, and that, that's what Feed the Hungry does mm -hmm. by feeding people, especially with every child every day, feeding well over 100,000 kids every single day. Mm -hmm. But to provide people a Bible who otherwise could not have one, right. along with that meal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really, I cannot think of, of anything that's more of just a, a ground level 
uh, for a Christian cause. So now is the time, like you said, I mean, we're, we're right in the throes of our, uh, our 90 day campaign. Mm -hmm. We want people to, uh, to come alongside and, and help us. $5 is all it takes for, for one Bible. Our goal is 100,000 Bibles. Uh, I, I see a, a big uh, potential for this, not only this year, but also going into next year. Some other ways that we want to expand this, mm -hmm. working alongside Feed the Hungry. Uh, I'm very excited about this program. And now is the time. I mean, for folks who are maybe looking to make that, uh, that end of the year donation, mm -hmm. uh, December's just a few days away. Now's the time to pick up the phone yep. and get involved. Good time. Not only is it uh, Christmas, the time of giving, celebrating Christ's birth as well, but uh, as you mentioned, the end of the year, you can make some good decisions there and send out the Word of God. 1-800-365-3732 is the number to call, or you can go online to lacy.com and help us sow the Word of God into the hearts of hungry people around the world. We'd love to connect with you today. You can join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, live at lacy.com is our email address. Comes right here to the set of Harvest. World News is next. It is Monday, November 28, 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. Saturday's death of longtime Cuban dictator Fidel Castro brought celebration for many Cuban immigrants to the U.S., but now Many wonder what the future holds for that island nation. Here's one person with their reaction. I don't celebrate death, but I, I celebrate the death of a tyrant. That is the feeling of many Cuban Americans. Castro's death potentially opens a door to a world previously off limits and offers hope for improved dialogue between the countries. Children of exiles here in the U.S. grapple with wanting to learn about their heritage while being respectful of their parents. Many millennials want to go to Cuba, but do not out of respect for their parents' position that the Castro regime must relinquish power before there's any substantial engagement. Meanwhile, staunchly conservative Francois Fillon won France's right-wing presidential nomination Sunday on promises of slashing public spending and immigration, while the unpopular President Francois Hollande still has not said whether he'll seek re-election. Prime Minister Manuel Valls says he's ready to compete in a left-wing primary in January. A government spokesman said Valls could only seek the nomination if he leaves his job. In Yemen, an airstrike by the Saudi-led military coalition killed at least 13 civilians near the city of Hodeidah Saturday. The airstrikes hit two homes in rural areas under control of Shiite rebels. The coalition began intervening in Yemen in March of 2015 at the request of the internationally recognized government after rebels seized the capital of Sana'a. Syrian state media is reporting government forces have captured another Aleppo neighborhood putting much of the northern part of that city under state control. Government forces captured the Sakur neighborhood early today in the latest blow to rebels. Syrian TV footage obtained by the Associated Press shows scores of Syrians reportedly fleeing in the government-controlled areas. And landslides triggered by floods have hit northern Italy in the past few days, especially the regions of Piedmont and Liguria. Monisi and Piaggio were badly damaged. Roads are cut, many houses inaccessible. Firefighters, Italian civil protection, and volunteers are trying to contact families living in homes that remain under threat. Coming up later, pregnancy counselor Kelly Richards talks about families who open their heart and home to children in need of adoption. But first, here's Pastor Mark Lance with today's Motivational Minute. So if people aren't responding to you in the right way, then maybe you're not communicating to them. Okay in the right way. You know, too many times when people don't respond to what we say in the way that we want them to, we're quick to blame them for misunderstanding us. But I want you to look at it differently on this Motivational Monday. Starting today, take complete responsibility of how people respond to you. And I know you're saying, but pastor, I can't help how they respond, but here's the deal. You do control how you communicate to them. And if you communicate in such a way that's going to bring the right response out of people, then in that way, I can control how they respond. People may dislike you, but never let it be said that they misunderstand you. So today, be a better communicator. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Communicate in a clear way, and guess what? You just may start getting a clear response from the people around you. Happy Monday to you as we take control of how we communicate starting today. We want
want to help you live and pray intentionally in 2017 by sending you one of our beautiful and functional Lacie Broadcasting Personal Prayer Diary and Daily Planners. Each week in the diary, there's a selected scripture and a chosen country to aid you in praying while you plan your own daily prayers and activities. To get yours, call 1-800-365-3732 and make a minimum gift of just $19. The demand is high and they'll go quickly. So call today, 1-800-365-3732. November is National Adoption Month, and this year our theme is United in Love, celebrating and supporting those who have been touched by adoption. These are birth parents, adoptive families, and adoptees. Members of each of these groups are likely part of your network of family, friends, neighbors, colleagues, and church members. You can show your support in simple ways and let them know they're not alone. Start a support group for adoptees or birth parents. Provide a meal or offer to babysit for an adoptive family. Advocate by connecting others to Bethany. Bethany's post-adoption support services are available to anyone. Whether someone is in need of short-term coaching, experiencing challenges with attachment, or searching for a birth parent, Bethany's post-adoption support is there to help. We are here to surround you in love and support. This November, we invite you to join us and unite in love and support all who have been touched by adoption. Kelly Richards has been a pregnancy counselor for more than 12 years with Bethany Christian Services, a global nonprofit organization that saves countless lives through the power of adoption. Mm -hmm. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Kelly. Thank you. Okay, so I was just telling you just before the show that I have my own adoption story where, you know, I felt like God used me to help bring a family together. Awesome. Um, and that's what Bethany does. It right. brings families together and keeps them together. So right. as your role as a pregnancy counselor, what are you responsible for doing? So I have the opportunity of walking alongside um, women and men who are facing an unplanned pregnancy and who um, are considering placing their child for adoption. Mm -hmm. And some of those people probably would consider abortion and probably right. do, but um, they come to Bethany and you are able to share with them how other families can come in and be a part. Right, so once they, I think they understand what it means, um, what adoption really is, mm -hmm. that they can have a role, that they can choose the family, that they can, you know, meet the family and, and have a role in the child's life. That changes things for them so they can know how the child is doing. Hmm. And Kelly, uh, uh, November is National Adoption Month, yes. so it's great to have you here today. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of the, the, the reasons why there needs to be a month where adoption is highlighted and some of the ways that Bethany is is helping to, to uh, commemorate the month. So we are a global organization. We serve um, not just in the U.S. but in other countries as well. Um, there probably should be more than just a month. It should be all year, right? Um, but there is uh, a need for, for us to be aware of children in, in, out there who need a family. Mm -hmm. In the United States foster care system, there are 500,000 children waiting. Wow. Wow. Waiting for a permanent waiting. Right. families or permanent right. homes. Right. Wow. If one in every three churches had a family mm -hmm. adopt out of the foster care system, there would not be a need. Wow. Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't seem like a, that much, really. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, worldwide, there are 1.1 million orphans. Mm -hmm. So. One of the things you just mentioned to me that was kind of like a aha, I just didn't show it on my face, and that mm -hmm. is that adoptive families, the two families can come together and be a part of the process. I mean, back in the day, you, you didn't have, you, you, you know, you spent the rest of your adult life searching right. for your birth parents. So how is that process, how do you even do that? I right. Mean, so it's, it's hard to picture unless you've seen it. And right. if you saw from my eyes what I get to see, I think, um, you know, it, it's really amazing. 
So when I meet with expectant parents and they're considering adoption, I think for them, they need to see what it would look like for their child to be in a family. So that's, they choose the family. They get to meet the family and get to know them a little bit so that they can picture it for themselves and feel comfortable. I mean, what a trust thing mm -hmm. to say, you're going to raise my child. Um, they need to be, be comfortable with that. And when it comes to the, the kinds of services that, that Bethany uh, provides and mm -hmm. assists families with, um, what are some of the major, I guess, expectations or concerns when there is a, a parent who's willing mm -hmm. to, to put up a child for adoption? The concerns for the family? Yes. Um, I, I think um, really when it boils down to is uh, it's a relationship mm -hmm. that develops. So the risk for the family before a placement is, um, is this placement going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And right. Well, uh, many times it does, through, sometimes yeah. it doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't consider that someone changing their mind. That you can't make, up, make a decision for adoption until you've um, had the baby mm -hmm. and then papers can be signed, right? So for the family, um, you know, that waiting period, is this going to happen or not? But then after a placement happens, you know, the roles kind of, the, the trust factor, I guess, shifts a little bit. Fli flips um, a little bit. It yeah. does. It yeah. does. So for the, the birth mom then and the birth dad, is the family going to, you know, live up to the promises that they mm -hmm. expressed? Mm -hmm. Are they going to continue with um, contact? Are they going to allow for visits? And I was going to say, if I could just follow up real quick, uh, I would imagine then that Bethany's involved after the birth Absolutely. and after the adoption takes place and still has contact then with, the, uh, not an intermediary, but still is, is, is a contact point for, for both families. Absolutely. Um, so from my end, working with birth parents, you know, that is huge to me to be able to follow up with the moms that I get to work with. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually planning to meet with a mom right after this that placed two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so just to help her to continue to work through some of her feelings and um, she doesn't need help navigating the relationship, they're doing fine. Mm -hmm. Talk about those families. Talk about, I feel like these families are unsung heroes, mm -hmm. you know, who go through, I mean, we're looking at some of them now and mm -hmm. I can see that this is um, a family, you know, you, from different races, different backgrounds, right. international um, children, or, or do you even handle international adoption? We do, we do. Mm -hmm. And the political climate changes for international, so that changes. China is, um, has been um, a place, placing um, country for, for a long time, and there mm -hmm. are children with some minor special needs that need homes, and that process can actually go fairly quickly and, and fairly predictable. Um, as far as other countries, um, most... The, I think the face of adoption is changing somewhat internationally. There are, the children are a little bit older or sibling groups um, definitely experience some trauma. Mm -hmm. Would you um, talk about maybe two stereotypes about adoption that you want to demystify or debunk? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes, um, well, families don't like to hear, you know, oh, they're the heroes, they rescued a child, mm -hmm. or that a child is a project. Mm -hmm. um, no child wants to be uh, considered a project, right? And so for families, um, you know, they have the opportunity to raise a child and to be blessed in their family, to grow their family. Mm -hmm. So I don't think adoptive families want to be considered heroes. And so that's something that I hear Mm. Oh, I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it, and in a way they are, of course, and right. so are birth moms. But um, they're real people who, um, you know, face difficulties in their life. And mm -hmm. they're much more like all of us than I think we want to give credit to. Mm -hmm. So they struggle too, right? Right. Both sides. Uh, let me ask you uh, your opinion as well as maybe Bethany's position. Uh, you talk about foster care and then adoption, mm -hmm. like permanent mm -hmm. adoption. Sure. Uh, is there, I mean, do families kind of, tr not try out, but kind of serve in a foster care way first and then go on to adopt a child? So there's different programs. We have our domestic infant program, and that is typically families facing infertility, young couples. Um, and then there's foster care, foster to adopt. 
so families can choose to, to um, enter the foster care system. And then international adoption um, is, you know, straight adoption. Mm -hmm. um, we also do work in other countries to preserve families. Mm -hmm. um, so the first option I would say internationally would be to try to keep the family together that the child is in. If that's not possible, we do some work to help with foster care or domestic adoption within another country. Mm -hmm. And then I would say the third choice for international is for the child to be adopted outside of the country. So Wow, Kelly, thanks so much for coming on and talking with us about National Adoption Month. To connect with Kelly, go to Bethany.org or go to Harvest-TV.com. Coming up later, your prayer request, but up next, Brian Bush with the latest news from Israel. We'll be right back. What if I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at Lassie Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at .com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. Imagine a world where every man, woman, and child had a Bible. There'd be more love, more compassion, more peace. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Help us spread the word by giving to LaCie Broadcasting. We're teaming up with Feed the Hungry to get Bibles into as many hands as possible. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. We need your help to send 100,000 Bibles to the people of Nicaragua, Uganda, and Honduras. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Any amount will help. Please don't wait. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. Hello, everybody. I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving weekend. The news here in the Middle East, well, Syrian government forces are making rapid gains that they have expanded upon since the weekend. Now, just hours ago, they are confirmed to be in control of two key districts in eastern Aleppo. This effectively splits the rebel-held territory in the contested city. This weekend saw the heaviest bombardment in the five-year civil war for Syria, and thousands of civilians have poured out of the rebel-held eastern districts. The rebels have held the eastern part of Aleppo for four years. Here in Israel, tens of thousands of people were evacuated as fires raged on for four and a half days. Some wildfires have apparently been set as political arson, but all were driven by strong, gusty, dry winds and fed by the extreme drought. Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu said arson is terror and would be treated as such. 25 arrests have been made so far. The Palestinian Authority sent teams of firefighters and firefighting equipment, including a plane to Israel. Both neighboring Egypt and Jordan also sent firefighting personnel and aircraft came from nine other countries to assist in putting out the fires. And lastly, in Egypt, the oldest known harbor in the world has been discovered at Wadi El Jaf on the Red Sea. The monumental harbor is being dated to 4,600 years ago during the reign of King Khufu. He is the one who built the Great Pyramid in Giza. Also found was a massive archive of papyri, the oldest known to date, that detail how the harbor was built and used to import copper and mineral materials to help build the pyramid. Friends, that's a wrap of your news. The Harvest Show continues right after this. 
Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. See Proline. And a reminder that prayer line is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The number that gets you in, 1-800-365-3732. Outside the United States, use your international code and dial 574-291-1010. You can always email your prayer request to prayerlc.com. Check out what others are praying about at worldharvest.com or mail them. Put a stamp on it and send it to 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. I know that prayer line was a very busy place over the holiday weekend. Many people struggling with the holidays, perhaps issues of loneliness, needing for healing. And those issues obviously don't go away as we approach Christmas time, but we want you to know that we are always here for you, always invested in your development, and that's why we'll be here again for another edition of Harvest tomorrow. There's only one place on earth where Jesus walked, where Jesus ministered, only one place where he calmed the sea, and one place where he conquered death. And you can see it for yourself with Lassie Tours. I want to invite you to come and experience the Bible on a life-changing pilgrimage to the Holy Land, February 14th through the 23rd. You know the story. Now witness it for yourself. Call the number on the screen or go online to register for the trip of a lifetime. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today, you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18. Or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today. 